In 1996, the World Health Organization estimated that between 10 and 11 percent of the world's population has a disability, up to 600 to 650 million people. So where is their blessing in disability? As I thought about that this week, sort of two tracks answering that. One would say that disability powerfully orients us to and connects us to the heart of God. I think that's the easier answer. And the more mysterious and difficult one is that God reveals himself through the reality of disability. So this week I'm on the phone with a new hoper who came up to me after church on Sunday and said, uh, hey, I've got a disability, I've got schizophrenia, and um, I can tell you where you see God in my disability. And he phoned me this week, and we talked on the phone for half an hour, and in summary, really summarized, says, he says, it drives me to pray in a way I never prayed before. It drives me to depend on God because I know I need to depend on God. It causes me to focus on God more and to humbly trust because I simply cannot do it at times in my life. Then he went on to talk. He's involved with a schizophrenia board or the, 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 the organization that is a, a support group for schizophrenics in Calgary and how studies have shown that often schizophrenia connects to issues of pride and extreme egocentricity and how sometimes he thinks that this way that the, the disability drives him to God helps him from being too proud or too egocentric. And that's true. There's something about knowing your need that drives you into the arms of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul, disabled, wrote this. Because of the extravagance of those revelations, he had this time in his life where God just like opened the doors of heaven and showed him stuff that none of us could fathom seeing. And that so impacted his life. Because of the extravagance of those revelations... And so I couldn't, or so I wouldn't get a big head. I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did the best to get me down. What he, in fact, did was push me to my knees. No danger then of walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did that, and then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. Now I take limitations in stride and with good cheer. And these limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, accidents, opposition, bad breaks. I thought Paul maybe had a disorder with his sight and was going blind. I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. And I always go back to that prayer I prayed in seminary, knowing, you know, the kind of person I was as a real estate developer now going into the ministry and being a guy who sort of talks for God, that God, if allowing me to fall into those deep depressions that have happened so many times in life needs to happen to keep my pride in check and to keep me from blowing it or messing up the, your church, then bring it on. And sadly, God answers that prayer all too often. This week, Wednesday, you know, so weak, so disabled. I, I can't, I can't do it, you know. Very weak. And in those times, the most amazing things happen. Beautiful things, profound things. Inside of me, but also even through me as a disabled person reaching out into the world. And no, I'm not equating depression with polio, with Down syndrome, with... So be cool on that. 
Christ is God's ultimate miracle and wisdom all wrapped up in one. Human wisdom, this whole performance-oriented, knowledge-based, we can know so much, can sometimes be so tinny and so impotent next to the seeming absurdity of God. Human strength can't begin to compete with God's weakness. And this week, you read all the stories of, from people with disabilities and how they feel mistreated and did as kids growing up, you know? How people avoided them because they couldn't look at them without seeing disability. And how they teased and belittled. And when we get older, we don't do that because we get it, right? So we just sort of speak louder to blind people and treat them pejoratively, whatever their disability how a lot of that comes from our own insecurities. Can you imagine God infinitely greater than any human being treating you the way you maybe feel or react to or treat the way I have treated people with disabilities? And the distance between you and a person with cerebral palsy is so infinitely small, negligible, compared to the distance between God and you. So disability is a mirror, and it affirms that we all fall short, and that none of us are perfect, despite our delusional, schizophrenic thinking. And only God is. God is. 